ever so closely to a deal to raise the debt limit. We're not there. We haven't agreed to anything yet, but I, I see the path that we can come to an agreement. If no deal is reached by the deadline, interest rates could skyrocket on bonds, credit cards, and some mortgages. That's according to a White House report. Plus, millions of jobs could be lost. Republicans are pushing for budget cuts and new work requirements on some welfare recipients as conditions to raise the limit. Deal breakers for some progressives, though. You do not balance the budget on the backs of children and elderly. Congress must act to prevent default. And that was the vice president in that last soundbite there. In a letter, several Democrats are urging the president to ignore Republican demands altogether, instead telling him to invoke the 14th Amendment to raise the debt limit, an untested move which would face legal challenges. Beach to Bay Marathon is kicking off this weekend, and it's sure to bring the runners and their pocketbooks to Corpus Christi. Every year, the annual event brings thousands to the Coastal Bend. Visit Corpus Christi tells us roughly 8,000 people are expected to arrive this year. More than 1,000 hotels have already been booked in advance. From restaurants to attractions, the city is expected to profit at least $1.5 million. From a community standpoint, that $1.5 million also has sales tax implications as well. All those individuals, when they stay in restaurants and they go to attractions, they pay sales tax dollars as well. And the city uses those sales tax dollars to fix the streets, to improve our parks and recreation, to hire more police officers, more firefighters. The Six Leg Marathon has been around since 1976. To learn more about Beach to Bay, visit our website at ChrisTV.com. Now, your Chris 6 weather forecast. Well, we want to kind of take a look at some of the weather for Beach to Bay, huh? Yes, Chief Meteorologist <laughs> Del Nelson joins us now. Del, I know you have the forecast that Pat will be running in this Saturday, but many <laughs> runners want to know. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, we're not going to see the smoke from the agricultural fires in Mexico like we have in previous years, and it won't be near as hot as it was last year, so that's good. But take a look at the satellite depiction here. We had some storms in Mexico head this way and a lot of cloud cover, lightning visible out to the west around Laredo, but that storm is dissipating. Ground clutter to our south right now, so does that bode well for the weekend or not? Well, at least the winds are from the right direction. They're out of the west in the upper levels. All that smoke and uh, those fires and everything is down to our south in Mexico. In a few minutes, I'll have a complete forecast and be back to tell you all about it. I feel like it's a huge step for my community, my African-American community. A really huge step indeed, the history being made by this Carroll High School senior. And later, the girl power on display today for the folks over at Habitat for Humanity. Stay with us. Chris 6 News at 10. Welcome back. A Carroll High School senior is beating the odds when it comes to his education. There he is, 18-year-old Isaiah Gomez. He is graduating this year, but he has much more to brag about. He is the first African-American valedictorian to graduate from the school. Isaiah is graduating with a 4.8 grade point average. And because of this, he's also getting some big time recognition from the NAACP. He says, look, he just wants to be an example for others. But at the end of the day, I feel like it's just um, all in your head. It's just a, a mind block that you have to jump over eventually. Okay, how impressive is this, Clara? Isaiah plans to attend Harvard University to study molecular biology. Congratulations. And the academic achieving doesn't stop there. Next, why this signature wear a pretty big deal for students over in Aransas past today. Plus, just moments away, Dale will be looking with your full look at your forecast. Stay with us. Welcome back. High school seniors over at Aransas Pass High School putting pen to paper today for the signing event today. More than 80% of its students will be continuing their education at either a university, vocational school, or through military service. You are. They helped me with every step of the way. Any problem I had, they were always there to get me through it. Uh, they've helped me um, like get ready for the Air Force, to help me talk to recruiters, and help me reach out. My man joining the Air Force right there. Hey, we send a big congratulations to these, con uh, these graduates, and we wish them all the best in their future endeavors. 
Now, your Chris 6 weather forecast. All right. Well, today was a nice day. Lots of sunshine, light winds, and the humidity not too bad. We started reasonable and below seasonal levels at 69, and we ended at 89. No rainfall today, of course, with all those beautiful blue skies. And nice that they're not filled with smoke like they typically are this time of the year. 76 right now, light winds out of the southeast at 7, and temperatures around the area are all in the 70s. Very uniform from the inland areas out to the west all the way to the coastal areas and in between it's 75 in Mathis and 73 here in Corpus Christi. So the Doppler radar shows storms that were out to the west have dissipated now and faded into ground clutter here as uh, we've had uh, again a little bit around the rain. Let's take a look at what's going on. Low clouds, some light fog here overnight and in the morning and then tomorrow lots of sunshine just like today. It changes slightly here on Saturday. Take a look. We'll start with morning clouds. This will actually slow down the temperature rise for for beach to bay and other outdoor activities on Saturday morning. Notice how it's mostly cloudy here and then the clouds start to break up by 9 a.m. and by noon they're pretty much gone across the region. Later in the day we see showers and thunderstorms out to the west. This is at 10 o'clock at night. There's a weak front coming down from the north and a disturbance coming in from the west and uh, we may see a little bit more rainfall in the area at 10 o'clock on Saturday night uh, than this is showing right now. We'll update it tomorrow. But through uh, uh, Sunday night, and again, we'll see a few showers here on Sunday morning. We'll pick up uh, very light rainfall amounts along the coast, but further inland, there could be one to two inches fall, and that would help out our watershed a little bit, where our water supply is sitting just below 45% of total capacity. All right, so we've got uh, calm winds overnight and in the morning, and a light breeze here tomorrow afternoon, and then on Saturday, we'll start out with very light winds in the morning. That's good news for the runners for Beach to Bay, and then very light winds at noon as well, so not much wind. The Rancis Pass Shrimpery kicks off tomorrow, and oh my, the weather looks great. Heat index not bad at 91 at 4 o'clock, but when the activities kick off around 6, 88, with the actual temperature of 83 dropping into the upper 70s by midnight with a light southeasterly wind. Beach to Bay on Saturday looks like this, 72 at 7, 80 at 9 a.m. and 85 at noon, and winds will stay under 10 miles an hour for the most part for that entire uh, journey there. And as far as the heat index goes, 78 right now will be 72 in the morning morning, so no problem, but it hits 95 here tomorrow afternoon. Going to be hot uh, here tomorrow. And then on Saturday morning, low 70s is where it starts out. By noon, the heat index is only 85. Hopefully, most of the runners will be done by noon because things deteriorate from there for running purposes. And again, you can see a few sprinkles out to the west here from those storms in Mexico, but overall they've died out. There's another batch that'll be making a run at us tomorrow night, but it's the one on Saturday night that will invade the coastal areas of the coastal bend with scattered activity as this high backs off, but that's what's keeping that rain at bay right now. Here's the dog walking forecast for this evening. Looks like this, low 70s, a light south wind at about five if you haven't walked your dog yet tonight. Upper 60s for lows tonight inland to 71 in Sinton, Robstown and Corpus Christi, 77 in Port Aransas, and the highs tomorrow reach 90 degrees here with 92 in George West and 91 for Freer. All right, here's your seven-day forecast. Again, 71 tonight and 90. Hot and humid tomorrow, 70 and 89 Saturday. We'll pick up some late-day clouds. Then we'll have uh, isolated to scattered thunder showers here Saturday night into Sunday morning, but uh, during the day on Sunday, it looks pretty dry, although mostly cloudy, so we'll back that high down to 87, and then it's going to be hot and steamy and dry Monday through Thursday of next week. All right, that's a look at your weather. We'll have uh, sports with Larissa and more with Clara and Pat right after this. You're watching Chris 6 News at 10. <laughs> Well, that's our very own Clarissa Cerna, co-host of Coastal Living, saying her heart out for today's Go Red for Women's Luncheon at the American Bank Center. The campaign by American Heart Association raises awareness and funds for the fight against cardiovascular disease. It's the number one killer for women. I had the privilege of attending the luncheon along with Taylor Alanis and Michelle Lorenzo at today's luncheon. They raised more than $500,000 for the Go Red for Women campaign. The 2023 Corpus Christi Women of Impact nominees were also honored during the luncheon. 
Chris, six women were out there in full force today. Yes, it was okay. me, Taylor, and Michelle. Good stuff. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, did you know what it takes to build a home? Lumber, sweat, tools? Mostly sweat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all of the above, right? Plus one more key ingredient, love. There was plenty of that to go around today for Habitat for Humanity and a group of volunteers. Our Nadi Escobar joined the crew as they gave a woman in need a stronger foundation in life. That's the sound of hard work that pays off. About 30 women dedicated their time today to remodel a home for a family in the coastal bend that's in need. Habitat for Humanity partnered up with Valero, Amazon, and Walmart to make one homeowner's dream a reality. It's great to come out with a bunch of women and just work together to make someone's life better, especially here in our local community. Amber Hazen, the executive director of Habitat for Humanity, says the home will be in good hands. Knowing that a single mom who's very, very deserving is going to be placed in this home, I think it's just, um, it's incredible just working together and seeing what we can do and the, the difference that we can make in our community together. Another volunteer like Leanna Wilson also thinks it's incredible and says it makes her feel really proud of herself knowing she could be a helping hand for someone in her community. I'm like, I did this. Uh, this is, this is like, it is empowering, especially when you give a woman a hammer and like, hey, you can, you can nail a few nails. You can, uh, you know, put up some sheetrock. You can put up some siding. I mean, it's pretty incredible. The hope is to have a new family in this home in the next couple of months. Nighty Escobar, Chris 6 News. Really great to see them all coming together, right? Speaking of coming together, up next in sport, very busy night for Larissa. High school softball and baseball team action. The playoffs, it's happening tonight. She'll have all your highlights next. This is your 6 Sports Report. Good evening, everyone. I'm Larissa Liska. A busy day for playoffs. We start with game one of a Class 5A baseball regional quarterfinal at Cabinus Field. It was a Corpus Christi ISD rivalry renewed between the 17-ranked Carroll Tigers and number five-ranked Ray Texans. Carroll with momentum early, bases loaded. EJ Cantu on a full count hits a blooper to the left field corner, brings home Easton Hewitt and Christopher Chavez for a two-run lead. Top of the fourth, Ray down three to one. Bases juiced. Orlando Ruiz sends a grounder up the middle. Air on the play brings home two runners and the game is tied at three all. A few batters later, Texas A&M signee Jack Bell hammers a shot deep to center field. Brings home two more Texans for a triple. Ray steals the lead five to three and the Texans win six to three. Game two is set for Friday at 7 p.m. at Cabinus Field. Now to class 3A baseball playoffs between Rio Hondo and the top-ranked London Pirates. London junior pitcher Blaine Line dominated the mound, getting an early seven strikeouts in a row, ending his outing with 13 punchouts. Now bottom of the first, London scores first. Landon Salinas singles on a line drive to left field, brings home R.J. Olivetis and Mason Jacob for a two-zip lead. Second frame now, Olivetis taps the grounder to second. RBI single puts the Pirates. Pirates up by three. The defending state champs win five to one. London is moving on to the regional semifinals. Also in 3A baseball, the Santa Gertrudis Academy Lions and 22-ranked Banchetti Bulldogs played game one of the regional quarterfinals. Second inning, Banchetti's Manny Flores hits a liner to left center sack fly. Put